どうかしらどうかしらピラマヤイエロー There's one time where we had to hide We don't have to hide no more There's never ending I guess when it comes to our, our way of life From the time we are born to the time we have to go back. In between that time, though, there's uh, there's so much things that it's it's there for us. They took us away. They took us away from our parents and our grandparents as young children. They took us away from our culture and our prayer. They took us to boarding schools and they wouldn't let us speak our language or do anything like that. And they forced a different religion onto us. A lot of kids don't know where they come from or what their culture is because they were never taught it. They used to say, um, kill the Indian, save the land. Oh, well, he, uh, need to iron, uh, be told to now have sitting on and iron and all on in then, you know, uh, knock in there, as an ass, I know, and I've been all you students. It's very important to celebrate who we are as Indian people. We come from strong people, it's in our blood. Remember that. Know your history. Know who you are and know where you come from. My name is Makbia Jusinawea, and it means Little Cloud Woman. And my name on my birth certificate is Amelia Blackrow. Culture, it means a lot to me because it's who I am. It's our food, the way we dress, the way we sing, the way we dance, the way we style our hair. It's like, it's a lifestyle. I said, hello my relatives, I'm an Aninen. My name is Flying Eagle Boy. My family is uh, well, we're pretty traditional, you know. But I think we all got a little bit of at least some part of culture to us around here. It's the feeling you get when you're doing it, kind of a sense of pride because you know that your people once did it and we got those ways taken away from us for a while. I know that boarding schools were a way that the Wasi Jews came over and took our people, our kids, and took them from their families, took them far away so that we couldn't be together. They just beat us when we couldn't, when we talked in our language, they just, they were brutal. I heard a story that this man was trying to get language started in our school again, and so he went and asked an elder, and that elder wouldn't do it because he's afraid that they'll beat us again and try to take it away from us again. They couldn't teach their kids. That's how there became only a few knew about it, and that's how it's going away. And then they were ashamed also because of who they were. I think it brought a lot of fear into our elders and gave us a lot of hurt because now our people don't know who we are anymore. Boarding schools affected our culture today by epigenetics. The boarding schools made these kids depressed, so that depression has been slowly passed down to us. I think it's hard 
on the kids themselves and also on the elders. So just everybody is stressed and sad and they turn to alcohol or drugs to fix their problems, but it doesn't really. And so it just hides this, just makes it like hides up the secret, I guess. We've had a lot of suicides and a lot of just like people passing away. And I think in the past month there was like five funerals, right? And we've had those like a lot. It's sad to see where our people is, what's happening to them because it's just dying out. And for me, I don't want that. I don't want to see that happen because it just like, it like honestly really hurts me. People are always trying to tell you what to be and what you need to do. Like here, they tell you that you need to go get an education, come back and help the community. But like, some people are always telling you that you need to just get your education and leave and forget about your culture and don't help. Like now, nobody wants to go outside because there's druggies outside. We don't want to go outside. Don't go over there because they'll give you alcohol. They don't want you to be around those people, but those are your people and all they're, they're lost also. So like, because they're lost, our community's lost, and nobody likes being lost. And I think to stop suicide is to be happy, right? Because suicide comes from depression. And to be happy and whole is to have your community and be together as one. Good morning, it's good to see all of you. You look across the gym, you look next to you, you look right, you look left. Every one of you children are relatives. We all come from the same families. So we thought of getting all of the schools together at the same time. All of your relatives, your ancestors, this week, is for every one of you. It's a chance for us to learn in a school setting more about our own culture, more about our own traditions. How many of you little guys over here ever got to eat a buffalo tongue? That's the only food that could taste you back. Okay. Welcome everybody, we're here to uh, uh, process the buffalo right now. They're gutting it. As you can see, it takes a lot of work, a lot of teamwork. A long time ago, we used to use everything on these guts. Heart, lungs, liver, the stomach, the intestines, even the, uh, the male nut sack. Everything on this buffalo we use. See how big the buffalo's heart is? The buffalo provides so much for the Indian people, and uh, not a lot of people do this anymore. Butcher the buffalo. That's what they call tripe. That's what the inside of the guts eat. It's a, it's a delicacy. It taught me a lot of importance. They had me over there cutting off every little bit of piece of fat and just shows me that every part of the buffalo is important and that nothing goes to waste. Menudo! Yeah, this is where food comes from. 
I've I've been told long ago, the buffalo and skinning it and cutting it and washing it was the woman's job, and seeing that made me feel happy in a way. It made me feel like I was there with them, you know, back in the days. Knowing that our ancestors used to do that long ago and being being able to experience that and someone teaching us how to do that is a nice feeling. Everybody in the community is coming together. Whether they're a part of the Native community or not, they're all coming together. And I think it shows that there's more out there. And I feel like it opens up their eyes a little bit to who they can be or what they can do. We don't know some of these kids' lifestyle. We don't know what kind of home they have. So right here, school is their safe zone. This is where they come. Some of them might come just, just to get away sometimes. I guess in our English language, we call it games. But when I always tell our youth and even our adults, it's, um, it's a way of life. That was our classroom back, back in time. Majority of the games that we were playing now, I try to relate to maybe take ourselves back to our teepee days when we used to chase buffalo, when we roamed our land freely. But when you're there and you're actually playing and you're actually enjoying yourself, then you kind of understand more and it gives you self, some, some sense of identity. You're, you're enjoying yourself, but at the same time, you're like, oh man, how did they live a long time ago? What did they have to do to survive? These, this is the coyote or the fox. Ready? Uh. <laughs> okay, now this one, like the deer or the antelope, so a little bit bigger, you should be able to hit him. Here we go. <laughs> Eye hand coordination, reflexes, building your lungs up so they can run, talking to each other, you know, so expressing themselves so they're not holding anything in, using their voices. We're playing double ball. It's like lacrosse, it's like a sock with two balls, and you play with a stick. And how do you think that was important to the Native American people? It was fun. Back in the day, they used fields like this used to be like a mile long, and they go and they play through everything through trees and I, I don't know. This teaches you sportsmanship and uh, how to be a good person and how to respect people. I guess in our olden days, everything was a fun learning, but it taught so much things behind it: your patience, your respect, you know, um, being good to each other, helping each other, loving each other. Just playing games like this sees that there's hope for the future, you know? These weeks, like Native American Week, are really important so we can remind each other how important life is, even if it's through teaching game. This week is um, not enough time, but I'll take it over anything. Now, most, time, most tribes, they'll put their teepee to the east. And back here, that's what they call the place of honor. And you have a guest come in, you want to set them right here. And what should you do when they come into your teepee? Feed them, that's right. Why do you feed them? What are you giving them? Life, exactly, Delray, you're giving them life. So the first thing you do is you gotta get, you guys need to go over there and get that canvas and lay it out. I need a couple other guys to look and we want three good poles, good straight poles. See, it go across. Putting up a teepee is, uh, this is our traditional home. It's very efficient. You can take it down and put it up really quickly. That's why we're really a communal people is because one person to construct a teepee would take a lot of work. So that's kind of why I think it's important to put a teepee together because it, it's good activity even with the kids to put them all together in a circle and communally put it up. It's kind of who we are as a people. How come the biggest guys got the rope? <laughs> I was really intrigued in how, knowing that our people did that many years ago, and we're learning from all those experiences. I have a big imagination. Sometimes I wish I could go back in time and be there and be able to experience all of that for myself. Help him now, help him.
it's like you can see it and you just want to be there in real life but you can't because that was a long time ago <laughs> we'll pull the stick back some <laughs> i imagine myself there and doing those things and being there and it's just i love it i don't know how to explain it it's like a nice feeling to be able to be part of something that could possibly save our culture one day. If our ways were stronger, I think we'd We'd all be here for one another, maybe, if we practiced our ways more, and there wouldn't be so much people being lost. You know, it's gonna take a, a people to do it, not just one, not just a few. You know, we're really trying, that's what we're trying for, I think. Who here has known someone suicidal? Who here has known of someone committing suicide? How many have ever been in a rainstorm? How many got dry and warmed up later? Outside they were talking about suicide. Like, I don't think we've ever talked about suicide before. I've heard that there was going to be assemblies about suicide, but they've never happened. And so like outside and them talking about suicide is a big deal because nobody's ever done it before. The first thing you do if you wonder if someone's suicidal, you ask them, what do you ask them? Are you okay? Are you suicidal? We had people that acknowledged right here that they, they have had suicidal thoughts. It's a very common thought, I told you earlier. And it all connects because it's happening to our people. And I think if we know who we are and we know what, who we're supposed to depend on, and then if we can bring back our culture, I think that we'll be more happier because we're whole again. So I think it's just one big circle, but it's just a matter of how we're gonna get there. Maybe this week has helped certain people because they're connected again. Just bring them back to who they are and what they're supposed to, what they value for themselves. What is happening today is, I think, monumental for the Ani and Nakoda people. We're all in this together and trying to raise our people up and participate in their culture and know who they are as, as Ani and Nakoda people. Nelly, what does culture mean to you? Mm, it means everything to me. Does it? Yeah. What did you first learn to do in your culture? Dance. Sing. Mm -hmm. Talk. Why is that so important? Because you raised me like that. And it's all I know, mostly. Does that make you happy? Yes. <laughs> huh. That's good. Can you please introduce yourself?